when your quad first comes, uh, it'll, the, t uh, the tires will be off the front and the basket will be off the back and uh, it'll be stored underneath. And I'm going to just show you basically how it goes on. It's real simple. Um, first thing you need is a, a 15 16 socket. Well, you could probably get away with a, a 10 inch uh, crescent wrench, just for crescent wrench. But that's a 15 16 And basically, all you're going to have to do is the nut is on the axle, just take it off. Then you'll take your tire and put your tire on. Of course, I have uh, directional tires, so I've got to make sure these are the right way. Uh, yeah, that's right. The direction's going that way. Um, nice thing about this bike also is it has uh, seal bearings in the front. It also has seal bearings all throughout the whole bike. So that's nice. I mean, uh, the old uh, the old method was the old bearing and races. We had cones and races and had to adjust them. These you don't have to worry about. Uh, these are feel a little bit okay, but a little bit lumpy. But uh, the free wheel is pretty good. And what you'll do is you'll just uh, slide that onto the bike like so. And uh, this is a, has a nylon on the end of it, so uh, you don't have to worry about it coming loose. And uh, basically, you're just going to. I just checked for this back and forth movement, but you don't want to get too tight on the. Feels good. Free spins good. You want to check that. And while you got it up, you might as well check your tire pressure. Uh, I'd say it could be bad, but just check them since you got it. And you do, you do the other side the same way. Alright, uh, set up the shop for the back to show how the basket goes on and what tools you need for that. But basically, all you need is a 15 16 socket, breaker bar, or, or ratchet. Uh, I got a half inch drive here, but you don't really need that. Three inch drive would be fine. Or a good old fashioned 10 inch crescent wrench should do it. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, to do the basket, uh, when you get the bike, this is going to be uh, mounted up here. So eventually, once you get the basket on, you'll have to undo it and reclamp it here. But basically, uh, it the basket will just pick it up and slide it in. It fits a little bit tight because of the paint interference. So these are the tools you really need. I use this. This is the um, a center punch. It's, it's good enough to get in there to help me line up the holes. What I did is I just slid it on the bottom first, lined it up, got a bolt, stuck the bolt with the washer through it, and then I did the top side and then to tighten it and all it is uh, 7 16 I used a, a 6 inch extension so it makes it easier to get around the basket you know when you get it on the bottom and it takes a, a wrench on the other side and uh, these also have nylon nuts on so you can you know, just tighten it up Tighten it up, reset this, you're good to go. So, these are the tools you'll need to do that. Okay, I thought we'd talk about the recumbent seat. Uh, you probably got the recumbent seat, I believe you did. Uh, just to show you how it works, just in case you're not familiar with it, you have a, uh, a lock, a quick release on this, on the back, you also have one on the front on the opposite side. So you just quick release that side, quick release. And 
I'm not very strong with my left. Let alone my right. I got that under pretty tight. Let me put this down for a second. There we go. Okay, so what you do is you loosen those up. That allows you to move the seat back and forth. I probably chipped that from moving it around, but that's okay. A little touch up won't hurt that. And then also, not only do you have that movement, but you also have this lateral movement of the back, which you can move by sliding this up and down. And you can also take these, pop these like that. You can also pull these pins and you have adjustments like it's on number two now. You can adjust it all the way up to here, slide it all the way back. So you have all this adjustment for the back. I kind of like it where it is. Works for me. But if someone was, I don't know, has a different kind of shape body, I guess they would need that. So that's how that works. This works real simple. It's just a quick release. You just uh, pull it out and screw it just a little bit. And that allows you, you can move it around. And then you just loose, uh, tighten it back up like that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the wheel lights. Wheel lights I prefer are the wheel, are the wheel brights. Uh, when you get it, this is an old one by the way. I think it's, yeah, this one's blue. This is an old one I have from another bike. But anyway, you can tell they're durable, I tell you that. Uh, what I like about these, they last a long time. Um, the batteries do at least you can put batteries in it and you can rest assured you won't have to replace the batteries for at least a couple months and that would be uh, using them all the time at night and whatnot and i do a lot of night and, and early morning riding so i use my lights quite a bit so uh when it comes it comes big enough so you can do a 29 inch wheel to a 24 inch wheel it will not do 20 inch wheels because of this won't fit on the spokes unless you're kind of ingenious and you can figure out a way to hook it on the hub but uh, generally speaking they're pretty easy to install i like these like i said i don't mind replacing the batteries once every couple months i can deal with that uh, because these spokes well, these spokes are not as bad as as the back ones, the back ones are a lot worse. I'll show you those. Let's see here. Because these spokes are more like motorcycle spokes. And they're real thick. So you can see they don't they don't quite fit the way they're supposed to. So I had to put a strap on that. I don't have a problem with this. This just screws on okay. It goes down good. So it's good and sturdy. I always, they tell you to um, bundle this wire, but I like just wrapping it around the spoke. It's not that hard to do. And the batteries are pretty easy to replace. Uh, when I do a battery replacement, I'll, I guess I'll video that. It's not big, no big deal. Uh, this is basically the same sort of deal. It's by uh, uh, Go Brights or Easy Brights or. I'm not sure something brights uh, brights something uh, Cosmo Cosmo bright whatever anyway uh, it also takes three AAA batteries low volt LED light um, I don't know if you can probably barely see that but anyway um, at night it looks really good uh, these last a long time also. I don't, I don't, I, like I said, I don't, I haven't replaced those since I put them on. And it's been over a month. So, and uh, same thing with the wheel lights. I haven't put those, I haven't replaced those lights at all. And they're still pretty, or not the lights, the batteries. So that's pretty much explains the wheel lights. I like those. I, I recommend those to anybody that's looking at some kind of wheel light. I recommend those. Uh, However, this one's hanging down because I'm getting ready to replace the battery in it. I don't recommend these at all. Uh, they're very bright. 
I mean, I really like how bright they are. Uh, the problem is they only run on two AAA batteries and they'll last maybe a day or two. And that would be uh, not running them very much, maybe flash mode mostly. Um, they'll last a little bit longer in flash mode, but <laughs> they don't last very long. I'm not impressed with the battery life on this. So I'm kind of regretting that I bought them. I'm gonna keep them for right now until I find something better. But uh, I use them sparingly. <laughs> Okay, I got the light kit. These are the two front headlights. Uh, the rear lights in the back, I'll show you those. I will show you this. I, but I thought this was kind of cool. Let me just pop these lights off real quick. Just light these off. Loosen it up, we just get that on there pretty good. This is a piece. I'm going to try and get, and get some aluminum pipe today. Um, I love this thing. I would recommend uh, you getting one of these because uh, if you look around on your bike, you'll probably notice that you're not going to have very many options of mounting things on your bicycle. And I was running out of room on the top on my console bar. So I found this. This is what they call an extends bar. You can find them on their accessories for bikes. They're called extends bars, basically. What I like about this thing is that it actually wraps around this whole frame with ease, without any problem, and it's and it's good and sturdy. You can adjust this back and forth, up and down. Um, it's very versatile. You can put your water bottle on it. You can put your Stereo, you know, a little Bluetooth or whatever on it, or lights. In my case, I'm putting lights on it. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to slip some uh, aluminum tubes with some uh, quick release collets on it and extend it out uh, over the lights, over these reflectors, and have these right about there for now. Because these will be. But those will replace these. These are uh, LED lights. They're 125 watt motorcycle uh, running lamps. They use them on the motorcycle to come in a pair. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to mount those on there. Like that. They're not really that heavy. That's what I plan on doing, but it's going to require a battery. And uh, I'm going to lay all this stuff out and show you everything I've got planned for the battery system, but i got to talk to a technician. Okay. Um, talk about my my alarm and my emergency brake. Uh, I decided to mount this because it kind of holds my emergency brake. That keeps the bike from rolling, you know. <laughs> you park it out and go, hey come back here yeah that keeps it from rolling uh, this is the alarm I'm not sure how that works uh, it's kind of a cheap they had a lot of different ones I just thought I'd try this one there's another one I'm kind of interested in it's a little bit different it costs more of course but this one's just a basic alarm so uh, what happens is if you you know it's like a car alarm you come by somebody bumps it it'll go off and then it'll then it'll go off, you know, it'll stay on for a few minutes and it'll go off. Just like any other car. Alarm. Such as that. But, if you just keep messing with it, guess what happens? It goes off. And it'll stay going off. So that's pretty loud. Anyway, uh, that's the alarm. 
My backup one, I don't know where he's at, but that's my pit bull mugs. Uh, so that's that. Well, it takes a nine volt battery. And the reason why I mounted it there is because I had nowhere else to mount it. Now, if I had one of those, I can mount it. I can have a different area I can mount it where I can hide it a little bit better. But uh, right now, it serves a good purpose because it holds this, it's holding this in place for my emergency bricks. I don't mind it where it's at. And uh, I also uh, make sure I carry a good, a good lock, you know, a good cable lock. That's long enough where I can uh, wrap the frame up somewhere and lock it onto a post or a tree or something. But I generally kind of keep the bike where I can kind of keep an eye on it. And it okay, there's a lot of uh, phone holders on the market for bicycles. And um, I wouldn't recommend any of them. Um, this is the one I recommend. It's for a motorcycle. It's well made. Uh, it's com it has a lot of adjustability to it. It's on a like a like a little ball right here, so you can mount it any which way you want. And what I like about this the most, man, is this clamp. It's awesome. Let me just take it off real quick. It has uh, three adjustments. For a real tight, a tighter, um, you know, tighter pole that you want to put it on. Like maybe a half inch, it might clamp it. Uh, but I got it all the way out here because I mounted onto this. In fact, I've been wanting to move this out anyway, so I'm glad I took it off. And um, it's easy to mount. Just has a little thumb screw here. Let me see, I might have need you a little bit but I want to try and get the right angle I'm looking for and then you what you do is you tighten that up now I got plenty of room for my phone I'm gonna move it over a little bit more I don't mind there we go I think that'll be just right for me yeah, yeah, you know, as you get accessories and you start adding, you'll find yourself moving them and relocating them, make things a little bit better as, you know, as time goes by, you know. You go, yeah, why didn't they do it that way in the first place? Anyway, that's that's the phone holder. Now, this will hold my, I have a, a Samsung uh, S5, and it's in one of those lock, uh, those life lock things. It makes it really big. It holds that with no problem. In fact, this thing holds my, uh, I have a, I, uh, not a, I'm sorry, I have a Samsung uh, Tablet 4, and it holds that, believe it or not. And I can feel confident, because the way this thing is made and this, how strong it is, I can feel confident my phone doesn't go flying out if I hit a, you know, hit a bump or something. So, this works real well, I haven't had any problems with it, it holds my phone really well. And I don't always need to carry it, I can take it off and put it in my bag. I don't want it. Okay, the air horns uh, by Air Sound. Said so it's S is Z, Z O N D. Uh, when you get your, uh, if you get the air horn, you get this and the horn together, but you don't get a cage. So you need to get, you need to buy a cage for it. Now the one I got is. Uh, I would recommend a Velcro strap type. And that way you can put it anywhere you want it. The reason why I got this one is because this rubber piece here it really gives it some firmness to hold it where I want it to be. Let me show you light up. See what they do. What they do? Huh, not too bad. Okay, so. You get the canister, you get the horn, but you don't get the uh, the basket for it. So, this is just a bottle holder, basically. So you need a bottle, bottle holder for it. Um, so this is the canister that holds the air. The horn 
uh, can be filled on the back side here. There's like a little valve stem, just like you would see on a bicycle, and you hook it up to a bike pump, and you just pump it up. And uh, I uh, generally just do little spurts like that for pedestrians, but if cars get in my way, that's pretty loud. So, um, and basically, to pump it up, since I used up some of the air, I'm going to pump it up now. I'll show you how that's done. What you do is, uh, you put that on, you got to make sure you push down on it hard enough so that it will let air into the system. You know, so the valve stem will let air in. If you don't get it in hard enough, it won't fill. And you'll know it right away. Hear that? I don't have it quite hooked in all the way, but it's going in. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Put it on again. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a hassle. I have an air compressor, but I wouldn't suggest using it. Even though it says you can. Okay. I'm up to... Uh, about one... About 110. I like to get up to about 115. Okay. Uh, yeah, so back to the compressor idea. Uh, the only thing is if you fill up the compressor, it can go on too fast. You can blow the diaphragm. Uh, if you blow the diaphragm, then horn don't work. All it's going to do is blow air. So that's how that works. I'm going to be relocating this. It's a little bit loose. So i got to tighten it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to be moving this over more. In fact, I'm thinking about removing, removing these completely up off, off each side. I do have the caps, so I put the caps caps on. Let me show you the caps I put on it. These caps right here. I had these from a different bicycle. And I just put them in, and there's a little Phillips screw right there. You just unloosen it, and it pulls out. They're good, they're good caps. I like them. So I put those on. So I explain the air horn. Okay. Ah, the odometer, the favorite part of my bike. Favorite part of any bike, I think. Uh, I had this on a different bike. Uh, I took it off because the bike was red. But I, I like this odometer a lot because I like the large LED lay, uh, readout. And I also like the idea it works real good. It worked real well on my other bike. And I also like the idea it's wireless. Uh, you don't have to run a wire to the pickup. That's wireless pickup. So that gives you a lot of option right there. So uh, anyway, I had it, uh, I had my bicycle shop. I put in the pole, I had it all hooked up. It was working, I just wanted to calibrate it. And I'll show you what they did to the back side for the pickup. Um, I originally put this pole in, it was really nice when I put it in. Uh, it was, I had it set up, it was working. I just wanted to calibrate it, make sure it was, it was right, you know, because you have to put in the size rim and stuff in there, and I had to kind of figure it out. Uh, I thought I was pretty close, and then I get it back, and I see all this. It's all bent. They got all this crap, and now this thing's pointing sideways. It works. It's accurate because I took it on the ride to Balboa Park, and the mileage that my GPS said I did is exactly what this said I did. So it's accurate. <laughs> it looks like hell. So I'm going to see if I can fix that up a little bit. I found another another uh, pole here. Um, this one's a little bit wider. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dowel in it. And then locate the holes, drill it, and then uh, bolt it up so it can't be that easily bent. And if I do need to bend it, I'll do bend it on that tube, uh, tube bender and bend it where I need to bend it.
if it needs to be bent and clean up this mess and get this thing where it's pointing straight and uh, get it right yeah. okay so uh, but it works good I'm happy with it I just not happy with what my bike shop did with that okay this is my wonderful little um, Bluetooth portable stereo system that I got from Walgreens. It was on. It was one of those special things I had. It has a lithium battery in it. It's rechargeable. Uh, it also has an auxiliary in it for if you have an older kind of like even a freaking Walkman, you can plug it into this and listen to it. Or even one of those old cassette tapes, you can plug it into the auxiliary and listen to it. So. Uh, and it's also Bluetooth, so it covers both sides of the technology, which I like, because I have some old players too that I have that I might want to use someday, maybe not. Uh, it has a charger in the back, and I basically just park in the garage and I plug it in, I'll show you the back side of it in a minute. That kind of excuses orange. I just use our Sharpie on that just to get an idea. Uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is, uh, I have some extra of this fabric, and I'll, uh, be gluing a piece of fabric over that. And what I'm thinking about doing is even uh, have my wife make a little cover, so when I when I stop somewhere, I can cover this whole thing and it'll look like a head pillow, like a headrest, you know. So uh, and I'll show you how I got it mounted on here in a second. Turn it the way I want. Okay. As you can see, like if I'm at a picnic or something, uh, I can have my picnic and then just flip this around and and my music so that's kind of cool too so it works out and I like the idea it's right by my head so you know I can there's nowhere 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 else to mount this thing at all now they do make smaller little stereos and I have one okay I bought this back uh, not too long ago I don't know maybe about a year ago for my bikes for my regular bicycles it's uh, Bluetooth uh, it's also USB uh, that's rechargeable it's lithium battery as uh, your volume controls here it's a little tinny uh, you can receive calls on it um, but the calls are a little hard to hear especially in traffic um, for me anyway because my hearing's bad but maybe for a younger person might be okay uh, $54 uh, I could have bought two of those for the price of this these the ones for the bikes are expensive. I don't know why they're so expensive. This seems to work perfect for me, so I'm happy with that. Oh, did I point out that's the charging system, that's the cooler system, and then you got the on button, and you have some controls up here, which you can control off the phone or here, both either or. But this has a separate vo volumes control, so. If, what I used to do, I set this up to its almost loudest point, and then uh, that way I just control it from the phone. You know, that way I don't have to mess with that thing at all. That's how I got it set. And it has a little mic right here, so when a phone a phone call comes in, all I got to do is just turn my head just a little bit and talk towards this microphone, and uh, they can hear me. So uh, phone conversation is not a problem with this, even in uh, heavy traffic. So. I'm happy with the and, uh, system and it interfaces with everything on my smartphone, so it's perfect.